Welcome to another episode of foodietown.ca where two foodie sisters explore the culinary offerings of Canada and beyond. In this episode we bring the kiddos to Whistler. My kids are four and one and this is our first trip that is more than a three hour drive from Kelowna. The biggest challenge when traveling with kids is keeping them preoccupied along the route but luckily I found this great travel coloring kit that my son adores. There's a link to it in the description. But the drive from Kelowna to Whistler is packed with natural beauty that is new to my kids from waterfalls and mountains to a base jumper and the ocean along the Sea to Sky Highway. There was something to see even when the iPad wasn't playing, but trust me, it's still a necessity for long drives. So this is our first trip back to Whistler after the pandemic with two kids in tow. It's a learning curve, but we decided to get an Airbnb. We have five adults, two kids, all staying in one spot. I couldn't imagine staying somewhere without a kitchen. Our kids are hungry at any and all hours of the day, so avoiding dining out and having a kitchen where I can whip up breakfast, keep snacks, or have a microwave for late night milk demands is essential. So the main village was a short two minute walk away from our Airbnb and that meant we took full advantage of the large treehouse playground that some say is the best in Canada. There's lots to do for kiddos of all ages and lots to explore. You can find yoga in the village as well. Even on a rainy day, mothers were out with their babies to take advantage of free yoga. But the best part of the playground area, and maybe this is why it is the best in Canada, is that there are so many businesses around to keep the kids and parents happy. Coffee, pastries, restaurants, a toy shop, a candy shop adorn the area along with a concert stage where music plays throughout the summer. So what to do with the little ones? Well, you can simply walk around and explore. We wandered everywhere and found places like the Whistler Museum open before 11 a.m., which is a rarity. You can get in by donation and there are these great little electronic screens for you to play around and hear all the local bird sounds and learn about the history of Whistler. Now, if your kids are a little bit older, there is a light show in the forest that starts at 10 p.m. in July, or you can alternatively check out the Audain Art Museum, and it holds some great Indigenous and famed Canadian art by the group of seven who are inspired by the Canadian landscape themselves. But no trip to Whistler is complete without a bit of restaurant dining, which can be a challenge with the kiddos. So we decided to look into and hire Babysitting Whistler, a babysitting service. The eternal foodies we are, Taryn organized a do-it-yourself restaurant crawl. Yep, this lady. At five stops, we made reservations at each and just hopped around all evening. It was fantastic. Brickworks first. It has a large selection of over 30 gins and a great cocktail selection to match. The appies were a great way to kick off the evening and the vibe was low-key, but I found that during our visit in July, Whistler wasn't as busy as it has been before the pandemic. Also, many restaurants, like everywhere, are short-staffed, so please pack your patience. Next stop inside the swanky Pan Pacific is the Raven's Room, and honestly, it was our favorite stop of the evening for appies and drinks. We sat outside with a bit of a temporary break in the rain and took advantage of the punch bowls served with adorable crystal glasses. The Raven's Room has the best appies that everyone really enjoyed throughout the evening. I can't recommend it enough. Crowd pleasers like the potato puffs, the chili chicken, and the tuna tartare were our favorites. What is that? What are it's you? got some kick to it. That's oh. faux show. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> potato puffs. Mashed potato, going into a little circle, and deep fried. Oh, it is. Like, look at that. Whatever it is. Third stop of the evening, what can I say, 21 steps. It reminds me so much of the keg circa 2000. The atmosphere is very laid back, but it is popular for its steak offerings. Lots of families in the dining room, but the bar was popping. As a group, we weren't really feeling it and moved on, but I would consider taking teenagers with healthy appetites or go for a date night and sit at the bar. Appies were rich, there was a deep fried goat cheese and a filet wrapped with bacon. But I really wanted to go to Bar Oso, but they are renovating, so next time. Alternatively, Il Caminetto, for those of you who are wondering, 
was another option, but when we inquired about reservations, they claimed that they were booked up for the next 10 weeks. So we moved on to Cinnamon Bear Bar, a classic ski resort bar with games, pool, live music, and your basic drinks. It was a great place just to hang out before heading on to Araxi. So this is Whistler's most popular restaurant and consistently on Canada's top 100 list. White tablecloths, high-end dining, and classic Pacific Coast dishes like oysters, octopus, duck, and halibut are all found here. Delicious, fun vibe, one of Whistler's best, truly. You should go here if you had to choose one place to go. But let's get back to the kiddos. So I wasn't sure if I'd be able to... Uh, squeeze in a trip up to the peak to peak or not so this is a gondola trip for $85 per person kids under six are free you get one trip up to the peak and then as many trips across each peak as you'd like with one trip back down uh, to either you can either go to Blackcomb mountain base or whistle mountain base my son being four I wasn't sure if he would be frightened by the heights but he was a champ as was my one-year-old who was skipping her nap to be a part of it all each gondola was big enough to fit five adults, our double stroller, and a four-year-old comfortably. Make sure you are on the lookout for bears on the way up and on the way down. The peak to peak is more of a challenge for everyone with heights. Auntie was worried about it, as was everyone. No one wants a crying toddler on the world's highest gondola at 1,400 feet with views, waterfalls, rivers, lakes, and spans across four kilometers long. For the record, the ride is only 11 minutes, and by the way, my son did great. The entire trip, though, is about two hours long. So worth it. So ironically, and a first for us, we've been to Whistler a few times now, there was a bear at the peak, which made sense as the kitchen started to fire up and the cafeteria, he knew the possibility of lunch was coming. In case you run into a bear during your stay, be sure to stay calm and give the bear its space. Do not feed the bears. A fed bear is a dead bear. So on our way down, we decided to go the Blackcomb route for different scenery and I am so glad we did because this is where we saw the most bears. Four more to be exact, all of which were on the face of the mountain or walking along the bike and hiking paths. I just saw a bear. You see that bear down there? Look at him. big one when you arrive at the base of Blackcomb mountain you will be in the upper village which is about a five minute walk from the main village and about 20 minutes from where you probably began this entire peak to peak journey you'll find plenty of activities for your kids to experience from mini go-karting and kiss the sky trampoline experiences and even a bouncy castle for the younger kids ice cream lunch and bathrooms are all there as well but it's a beautiful walk back to the main village our visit to Whistler has come to an end with the kids. Their first time was amazing. One last visit to the Treehouse Playground and a walk around our Airbnb before we head on out. But we are going to break up the trip. We're heading to the Greater Vancouver Zoo to see even more animals before we head home to Kelowna. So this was our first ever visit to the Greater Vancouver Zoo. I was really impressed by all the animals that we could see from grizzly bears and tigers, oxes, bison, zebras, giraffes, hippos, plenty of animals for all the kids to see. It was very cool. I also appreciated all of the natural landscapes that were surrounding the animals. Not every zoo is like that. There's also a train that takes you around the property, but in true classic toddler style, my son, his favorite part were the robotic Jurassic offerings. All of the robot dinosaurs that started talking once he approached them. Not the zebra, not the tiger. But for our first lengthy family trip with two kids under five, it was great. They loved the scenery. They loved the waterfalls. 
and I definitely do it again. I hope you took some value from this video. I know it's straying from our usual format with kids that happens, but consider subscribing. We'd really appreciate it. We have a lot more fun on the way. Wahoo, wahoo, we're home.